Hey guys, it's Ecoasi Tilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm really excited because I'm going to continue the videos with the augmented reality racing game that I've been creating. We're going to be actually adding a couple more features in this video, which are going to be the player mission, which is going to include a scriptable object. I'm basically going to show you also what you see playing right now. The goal for this video is just to give you kind of like a core review of what I actually been working on. As you guys can see on the video that is playing right now, how it works, we're going to be placing a car. Once that car is placed, on the scene, we're going to be putting multiple targets. Once we put the targets, we're gonna allow the car to actually pick up those targets. Once everything is picked up, we're just gonna be showing you a screen that is going to tell you that the mission was completed. And I'm also going to be showing you the reload and also that machine on and off option that I added. So let's jump into Unity and I start working on it. All right, guys, so let me show you the changes that I made to the game. So this is the scene that I showed you in the previous video is the main game AR. And there were a couple of things that I added for this video, which is the player mission manager. This is the one that is responsible for finding out if the car has collected all the different spheres. They're actually going to be flags for now or just, you know, it'll just be a sphere as a placeholder. So the other thing that I want to show you is I created also what's called a scriptable object. And in the past I did JSON files and then started using scriptable objects and they became a lot more helpful. So in the beginning of the video, you saw that I created a, a player mission and I added multiple spheres. And if you look at this setup, it's basically an array of player items. It's like your inventory. The first thing that I'm going to allow the user to place is obviously going to be the car because that's going to be like the main actor. It has also an item type. So this is whether it's going to be a flag, a car, and we could extend this if we wanted to have different objects. I also have a priority because this determines what's going to be the first item that I'm going to allow the user to place. I also have a minimum distance because right now I could go in and, you know, add a prefab. And this is basically what's happening in the game is I add a prefab. Let's say that I add a prefab right here. Let me just go ahead and center it. And, you know, if I add a prefab right there and let's say that the car collects it, obviously it's going to be a lot bigger and the car is going, is going to collect it. I mean, it wouldn't be fair if I put all the spheres here and then the car collects it because it will be a very dumb game, right? It will be a game that doesn't really have a purpose. So for now, I just want to get the functionality going. And the way that it's going to work in the future is we're going to be, you know, calculating a distance. And if the car is, you know, either, you know, one meter away from the, from the target or two meters away, you know, depending on, on the mission, then we're going to, we're going to allow the car to actually, you know, collect that item. If now we're going to be changing the retycle to a different color to demonstrate to the user that, you know, the car is too, the sphere is too, too far from the car and therefore they need to place it at a larger distance. And that also is going to allow us to, you know, just practice and do other things with measurements. So I'm also going to be doing like, you know, altitude and different properties depending on the environment and the mission. So let's say that you, you have a chair and you also have, a, you know, obviously your floor. But if we want to place an item on a chair, you might need to build a ramp to be able to get to the chair. So it's kind of the idea of, you know, setting up a mission based on the environment. But basically this has, you know, priority minimum distance. The placement state is going to determine, you know, if we have actually placed this item because before I can place the next one, I want to make sure that the, you know, the user actually plays the car. Once you place this one, it's going to place this one and this one and this one. So that's what the, this is going to be an enum behind the scenes, the prefab. This can be anything you want. This happened to be an AR object, which is assigned to a car. And then the AR flag right now, it's just, you know, a very simple sphere like I was showing you. And I'm going to be swapping that out. So it's always important that when you start your game, you don't get too hang up on the, on the look, just, you know, get it working and then you can start making it look good. And that's what I'm basically doing. So, and then target reach, this is a property that it's going to allow me to determine, okay, if the car collected all these different targets, then I know that we basically win the game. And then what I have for that is basically a, a game stats. If I go here, it just shows you, okay, you won the game. Very simple. I also added a machine on option and also a reload. And I'll show you how those work behind the scenes. But when you turn these on, it's going to have the machine material with an alpha of one. When you do reload, it's going to reload the entire mission. So you can basically start over. So if we go to the player mission, I'm going to, I'm just going to be doing core reviews to it just to show you how everything works because it, it turned out to be a lot more code than I anticipated. So I don't want you 
to get bored, I'm just going to give you an overview. So I have a Unity event on this one, on the player mission that you know determines when the mission is completed so that we can display the UI. I also have an array of player missions. And this is that scriptable object that I show you. It's going to show you pretty quick how it works. This player mission has m many missions. So the, the way that it works is we're going to allow, actually, it's going to be one player mission with many inventory items. So you can have you know, as many files as you want. So if we go back into Unity and we go in here and say you want to create mission two, you can go ahead and create a you know, mission two here. And let's say that these had, for instance, you only wanted to have three items. Obviously, you're going to have a car, and then probably it's going to be one on this one. We haven't really coded distance, so I'm not going to do that. And then this one, we can just say no set because we haven't really done it. And then if we go into my prefabs here, prefabs, then I can easily just associate it with one of those. So if we go back and then player two, or you can also click here and then say, okay, which one is the car? So in this case, uh, the AR object is a car. So that I want to add a sphere. You can go here quickly and then add a sphere as well, which is going to be, in our case, going to be the flag. And let's say that in this one, I want to also do a flag, or maybe you want to do another car. It just really depends on, on your implementation. In my case, it's going to be flag and then flag because those two are going to be flags. And then I normally, for now, I've been putting the priority just in case I might remove it because, I mean, the order of the array items basically determines the priority. I am looking at these values so that it's actually being used. But that's basically how you set up a mission. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So if we go back into the code, the player mission is going to be you know, a scriptable object. It's a player mission inherits for that class. And then player item is just an array of inventory items that I have. And then this just determines the state of the mission. So if I go here, you're going to see that the state of the mission could be no set, it started or completed. This means that I already placed a car. So, and then this means that you know, I already collected all the different flags. On the inventory item type, I'm going to have an offset, a car, and a flag. And then this is going to be for placement. If, I, if the retycle actually was placed and I instantiated an object, I know that you know, at some point it's going to have a prefab created, and then at some point it's going to have an object that is placed. And then in here, this is just you know, what I show you on the Unity interface. That's just basically all those fields that are serialized. So if we go back here and we go in here, you can also look at you know, how I'm wiring up, wiring up the omission completed. If I go here, all I'm doing is just you know, on the Unity event, I'm just setting the property of that game object to true. And then I can also look at the player mission in here that is associated. If you wanted to swap these, let's say you wanted to test and duplicate these, like I said, if you want to make some changes on this one, you can go back into the player mission and then just associate it with the new mission. And then that's going to allow you to to create new missions with just a matter of clicks, which makes it makes it really cool. So let's get back to the player mission manager. And so this is what it is. It's just going to have an array of missions. Right now, I just have one item in that array because I only have one mission. And then just have uh, basically an index that determines what mission I'm on. And then also an instance to the player mission. This is just to determine if I already you know, collected all the different flags. It basically actually gives you a count of all different flags that I have in this mission. It doesn't really determine if I collected them all. It just does a count. Then on the awake method, I call start mission. And this just cleans everything up, makes sure that I am cleaning up all my flags and then basically the car. And the, the reason why I need to also clear it out, the player items and the current mission, is because it's a scriptable object, so it's going to be saved to the disk. So let's say that I have that mission halfway through and I reopen the game. It's actually going to have whatever the state of this subject was at that point. So I want to make sure that when we start the game, we're clearing everything out. So I'm destroying objects as well. So if we get back here. That's what I do on here. Handle mission completed. It's actually called from the car controller. And if we go in here, this is how I determine if I actually collect it. Uh, in my case, it's a flag. I get a place object item. And if I look at this item, basically it has a link to the player item. And then in here, I say, OK, if this item is not null, just to make sure that I did get a flag, and the layer of this one is a target, then I say, OK, this target has been rich. I set the actual visibility to false. Right now, it's just visibility. I might do an animation with a flag at some point. And then I just handle missions completed. This is the one that is going to determine, OK, how many, how many targets do I have remaining? And I just have some login information for debugging. And if the remaining target count is 0, 
then I set the player mission state to complete it, and then I also invoke my unity event and doing an allowable here. The other thing that I also do is I also, for, for this case, I need to check the placement, the placement mission status. This is so that I can do, okay, so if I place a car, let's say that I place a car, right? Well, if I place everything here, I'm not gonna do anything else, that's what this is doing. And then let's say that I place a car, or maybe I haven't placed a car, then what I'm gonna say, okay, give me the items that haven't been placed, I'm gonna order by priority, I'm gonna get the first one, as long as that one is, that is not null. I'm gonna check the state, make sure that I haven't placed it, and then I'm basically gonna place a car. And then, okay, so if that step is completed, it's going to check, okay, what's the next step? It's going to be a flag, and then it's gonna go on and on and on until there's really no more items to place, and now we can start the game. So that is a very, very, you know, quick summary of everything that I did here. I also added this place object state that I showed you in the previous video, but I'm gonna keep it short. I'm gonna have the code available in GitHub, and it's going to, for now, it's available just for patrons. So if you wanna check it out, make sure that you download it. And that's everything that I wanted to show you guys. If you guys have any questions about this or anything that, you know, wasn't clear, please let me know. And know that on the next video, I'm going to be adding the, you know, the calculation on the distance. I'm also going to be changing how the retycle works. So if we're not within the distance, it's gonna be red. As soon as we get within the distance, it's going to be, you know, why? Basically more indicators that we can get more awareness about what's happening in the augmented reality game. So that's everything for today. Thank you very much, guys.